In Hong Kong, they're a must and a source for personal data. And if they get into the wrong hands, it can mean trouble. As the drive for transparency rolls on, some wonder if the government is giving away too much information when it comes to those ID numbers and the right to privacy. We examine one case in point. We have sometimes the most unique, the most ingenious kind of, of frauds. Perhaps a significant distance, uh, difference in Hong Kong is that um, uh, people use ID cards ex extensively. I think there is a security risk in uh, a person's identity card number being made available to other people. A lot of people they don't want to pass up the chance on a good deal. Hong Kong's property market. The laws of supply and demand work overtime. And so do those double-checking information. At the land registry, at least 11,000 searches are done each day. Solicitors, banks, and just about anyone who wants to inquire about property have the right to, like in most places. What we do in the land registry is provide information about property particulars and owners. But uh, our information is our information is supplied by solicitors. The registry keeps 226 million pages of documents. That's enough to cover 1,200 soccer pitches. And its goal? To provide the public good value for money. And that it does, as we find out at this Admiralty office. For 30 Hong Kong dollars and a short walk. And wait. Property particulars are delivered in less than 15 minutes. Can you explain all this information here, what I've just got? You see right here, you have a mortgage, uh, mortgage, which is uh, this, this person has mortgaged his property to Bank of Bank, and then you can see this part, the reassignment, which means that he has paid up his mortgage. And how do I double check to make sure? He's really the owner. How can I get his ID number? You can sure? obtain a hard copy of the uh, deed of assignment by using this memorial number. You go down to 17th floor of this building, and you, re you go to the counter and you request that I, I want to have a hard copy of the, the page of the assi deed of assignment, which shows the owner name, his correspondence address, and his ID number. Okay. And that's um, it's, it's very easy. This is very um, important information. What happens if someone has the intent to like, def defraud another party? Then what happens? Well, I, I can't answer you in specific terms, but... Um, what can they do with this kind of information, for instance? Well, if you want to... Um, well, I have, to, I have to ask my, my boss if, if they how to answer you that part, because um, mm, it's, it's quite sensitive, it's these, these kind of um, issues. Well, um, let, me, let me stop a moment. Okay. Okay. Uh, well, Before ID cards were required by law in 1980, the land registry never required people's ID numbers for property registration since it was established in 1844. The ID card number, I don't think, should be made available at all in connection with uh, the uh, registration of uh, land transfers. Uh, it's quite unnecessary even for the government to ask for that information. And even if it were to ask, I don't think that should be made known to the general public for a fee. Once someone's got an ID card number, they, they have the ability um, to access a number of, of records. They have the ability to, to cause a check to be made against people. Um, and of course, we're, we're talking about legitimate checks that, that are made. So what happens if they aren't? ID numbers can lead to myriad ways in pulling off scams. Last month, tenants of a Hallmantin flat sold their landlord's property by faking his signature on bogus documents backed up by bogus ID cards. 
and for property owners who are away, the risks are even more worrying. Some of my clients are mostly from UK who lives in the UK and looking for an agent who can be trust and they worry about it, maybe they use it and sell it to other people, which happened uh, a few couple months ago. Raymond Tong looks for potential tenants for flats in the new territories. He believes ID numbers and even documents available from the registry can be easily abused. On this document, it says here that the owner bought this particular property for nearly $400,000. Mm -hmm. How can someone use this information fraudulently? They can show this copy to them, hey, this is from the land office, and I will sell it to you for uh, like less than the amount I bought it for. So they will try to hurry people, put down a deposit. Hey, you know, you don't put it down, deposit, I have a couple other people will give it to me today. We have to have, as lawyers, constant access uh, to the land registry, uh, to the deeds that are registered there. Um, if we, unless we had that system and we had that access, uh, the whole process of uh, transfer of property would uh, be considerably slowed down. Uh, it works quite efficiently in Hong Kong. What happens if I wanted to defraud somebody and mm. I did this land search and got all the information and Next, paid yeah, the extra yeah. five dollars yes, to get yeah. the ID card yes, number? Yeah. Wouldn't it be very easy for someone to defraud <laughs> another party once you get all that information? So is there a weakness in the system here? I can't answer the question. Because it's, it's prescribed by, by law to state the ID number on the documents. Some believe the identification number of property owners shouldn't be available in the first place. The government felt that it was necessary to be able to identify the uh, legitimate residents of Hong Kong from the uh, illegal immigrants. It was for that purpose. It's in the immigration ordinance. So it's really an immigration control measure. And how do I double check to make sure he's really the owner? How can I get his ID number? You can sure? obtain a hard copy of the uh, deed of assignment by using this memorial number. You go down to 17th floor of this building and you, re you go to the counter and you request that I, I want to have a hard copy of the, the page of the uh, deed of assignment which shows the owner name his correspondence address and his ID number. Mm -hmm. And that's um, it's, it's very easy to do. This is very um, important information. What happens if someone has the intent to like, def defraud another party? Then what happens? Well, I, I can't answer you in specific terms, but... Um, what can they do with this kind of information, for instance? Well, if you want to... Um, but I have to, I have to ask my my boss if if they, if they how to answer you that but because um, mm, it's it's quite sensitive it's these these kind of um, issues where well, um, can we can we stop a minute ah what's up. Before ID cards were required by law in 1980, the land registry never required people's ID numbers for property registration since it was established in 1844. The ID card number, I don't think, should be made available at all in connection with uh, the uh, registration of uh, land transfers. Uh, it's quite unnecessary even for the government to ask for that information. And even if it were to ask, I don't think that should be made known to the general public for a fee. Once someone's got an ID card number, they, they have the ability um, to access a number of, of records. They have the ability to, to cause a check to be made against people. Um, and of course, we, we're talking about legitimate checks that, that are made. So what happens if they aren't? ID numbers can lead to myriad ways in pulling off scams. Last month, tenants of a Hallmanton flat sold their landlord's property by faking his signature on bogus documents backed up by bogus ID cards. And for property owners who are away, the risks are even more worrying. Some of my clients are mostly from UK who lives in the UK. 
and looking for an agent who can be trusted. And they worry about it, maybe they use it and sell it to other people, which happened uh, a few couple months ago. Raymond Tong looks for potential tenants for flats in the new territories. He believes ID numbers and even documents available from the registry can be easily abused. On this document, it says here that the owner bought this particular property for nearly four hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars. How can someone use this information fraudulently? They can show this copy to them. Hey, this is from the land office, and I will sell it to you for uh, like less than the amount I bought it for. So they will try to hurry people, put down a deposit. Hey, you know, you don't put it down deposit. I have a couple other people will give it to me today. We have to have, as lawyers, constant access uh, to the land registry, uh, to the deeds that are registered there. Um, if we, unless we had that system and we had that access, uh, the whole process of uh, transfer of property would uh, be considerably slowed down. Uh, it works quite efficiently in Hong Kong. What happens if I wanted to defraud somebody and I did this land search and got all the information and paid yeah, yeah, the extra $5 yes, to get yeah. the ID card yes, number, yeah. wouldn't it be very easy for someone to defraud <laughs> another party once you get all that information? So is there a weakness in the system here? I can't answer the question. Because it's, it's prescribed by, by law to state the ID number on the documents. Some believe the identification number of property owners shouldn't be available in the first place. The government felt that it was necessary to be able to identify the uh, legitimate residents of Hong Kong from the uh, illegal immigrants. It was for that purpose. It's in the immigration ordinance. So it's really an immigration control measure. And with ID cards carrying the same weight as credit cards, there's no limit on the damage that can be done if they get into the wrong hands. A copy of an ID card has been misused for a number of, of different deception cases. Nonetheless, those particulars are also at the fingertips of more than 250 subscribers who are online with the registry system courtesy of the Hong Kong government. And how long does it normally take to get that information on the computer? On the computer, if the data is available, I think that is the, quite a short time, quite uh, 10 minutes. The company carries out searches for banks, solicitors, property agents, and other parties. How many hands does a, a document go through before it gets to the client? At least four hands, I think. Four. And while solicitors are required by law to furnish property information and other details to the government, their clients may be unaware that all that data are to become public record. It's not standard procedure then to inform them that the information they furnish to you will actually be a public record. Uh, no, I wouldn't say that, no. It isn't standard procedure. Don't uh, you think it should be? Uh, well, maybe we should make it so, yes. Uh, maybe a good idea. How would you feel if I told you um, I, kn I knew how much you paid for your property and what bank you borrowed money from and also your ID number and I have a copy of your deed? I think that would be an invasion of privacy. Is that possible? Did you know that? I didn't know that. I didn't know that because I work in a bank too. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Pretty embarrassing, isn't it, the situation? So on the whole, is there such a thing as divulging too much information? Do you think there's any invasion of privacy involved in this? I think so, because I think the ID number is very personal. It's like a credit card number. And uh, it's required for certain purposes, for certain limited purposes, uh, by the government. I don't think that should be made available to uh, all and sundry on payment of a fee. As Hong Kong tries to balance the public's right to know with the public's right to privacy, the search for a true answer won't be easy. And it can come at a high price.